In the time you watch this, almost 1,200 people will have been added to our population. Breathing the same oxygen, sharing the same space, and creating more and more greenhouse gases. Worries about overpopulation are back. We need to address much more aggressively the population part of the equation. If we keep ignoring this exponential population rise, nature will reduce human population for us. Is this the whole story? There's a lot of misconceptions about the nature of population growth. This debate is, you know, it is not understood in a way it should be. How many is really too many? And what does the answer have to do with frozen food? Let's start at the very beginning, when more people around meant security in an insecure world. On the Indian subcontinent, for example, Chanakya the philosopher suggested that widows quickly find new husbands. And during the Mughal rule, the increase in population was celebrated as it meant more people could work on a farm and produce more food. The Roman emperors were no different, in some cases passing laws to promote early marriage and frequent childbirth so their armies could stay up to strength. Life was mostly about popping babies and setting up new colonies until the number of people started becoming a visible problem. In the 18th century, British economist Thomas Malthus started ringing alarm bells. OK, ancient history lesson done. In more modern times, the fear exploded with the publication of a book called The Population Bomb. Its author, an American biologist, warned the Western world of the conditions he had seen in New Delhi. Overpopulation was soon blamed for everything from poverty and poor resource management to destroying the environment. Some countries began experimenting with morally and politically dubious methods of population control. China became the poster child and its one-child policy resulted in a disastrous gender imbalance. And like other control measures in Asia, it was eventually repealed. But the enemy had been identified as overpopulation. So what exactly is overpopulation? It is defined by carrying capacity. A slightly complicated concept, which basically means the number of individuals and ecosystems resources like food, water and space can sustain indefinitely. But demographers have consistently got it wrong. The early calculation says only 4 billion is the carrying capacity of Earth. But today, we are almost feeding the more than 7 billion population because we have supplemented our natural resources with the technological resources and be able to produce the resources to sustain the population. So we're not quite sure what the Earth's carrying capacity is because the variables are constantly changing. One thing's for sure, it's not the population element that's going to be the problem. Already in the developed world, the population has largely stabilized or begun to decline. And the developing world is on track to follow. Education and access to contraception are driving the numbers down, even if cities don't look like it yet. Then people get this perception that, you know, these cities are overcrowded and they're really busy. Well, actually what's happened is that planners haven't really taken into account the population growth that's going to happen anyway. Um, and then there's a second point, which is actually the, the kind of, the bigger impacts on the environment are linked to consumption. That's all I can say. As seen around the world, consumption, unlike population, is on an exponential rise. If we look at the, our levels of consumption across different contexts, globally, across cities, within cities, they're highly, highly unequal. OK, so let's then look at how we are consuming resources in that equation. Every year, researchers look at the Earth's annual resource budget and calculate at what point we will use it up. If we look at this by country, the differences are startling. Many nations in the Middle East and West exhaust their budget in the first quarter, while a few countries like India don't overshoot yet.
the average American consumes skin times of higher resources than an average Indian. And correspondingly, how much carbon dioxide we emit around the world is different too. In 2018, an Indian family of four had a carbon footprint of less than eight tons. An American family of four in the same year came in at almost 70. So shouldn't we then be looking at who is consuming and how much, instead of simply counting the number of people? One of the first studies to compare global emissions involved over 200 diverse researchers and policymakers. The result, called Project Drawdown, published a definitive list on reducing our impact. We did very complex models, you know, and we didn't know what they would be. I had a, a strong hunch of what the top 10 would be, and I was completely wrong, and all the rest of us were wrong. Number one was refrigerant management. Yes, you heard that right. The way we keep things cool is one of our worst offences against the planet. Our air conditioners and refrigerators still largely emit greenhouse gases much stronger than carbon dioxide when cooling or transporting frozen goods. The project estimates that changing to more efficient cooling could save five times more emissions than if all cars became electric. Another big one on the list is something we can all individually do something about. Food is huge. It's about a third, almost a third of all global emissions go to the food system. The waste nothing, if possible. No one can really deny that the human population has an impact on the environment. But right now, wealthier countries emit so much carbon that even adding three or four billion people in the global south won't significantly impact the rate of climate change. Also, lowering consumption sounds way easier than deciding whether that many people should or shouldn't exist. To say there's too many people is sort of a, 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 an unkindness to a person, you know, like which person thinks there are too many, you know, no one. It's time to change the narrative, away from the easy to blame visual problem of population to the more hidden and dangerous concerns of waste and overconsumption.